Hello all, my name is Paul Knight. I'm a director at Quadrant Building Control and today I'm going to talk to you about a new British standard that was introduced towards the end of 2020. This is BS 8579. It's a guide to the design of balconies and terraces. It's just over 40 pages long and is, for the most part, a highly readable and informative British standard and an entirely new one. It's designed to clear up some of the interpretation issues relating to these features that we see on so many of our buildings. To start, let's consider some general principles. Balconies exist as, as an amenity space for building users. Figure one and its associated key explain the various type of balcony, but these broadly fall into two categories, projecting balconies or recessed balconies. But both of these can either be open or closed to the elements. This diagram and key provide vital definitions for the rest of this British standard. The standard covers a broad area of topics, so we'll be looking at wind effects, inclusive design, safety, performance in fire, drainage, acoustic design and service life. Something that is not really directly considered by the building regulations, as far as balcony design is concerned, are wind effects. And this can have a significant effect both on balcony users and also objects placed on the balcony. It can cause unsafe conditions, but also just be a nuisance and reduce the usability of the balcony. Uncomfortable or unsafe conditions are more likely to exist if the balcony is at a higher elevation exposed to prevailing winds, located close to the corner of the building and or in close proximity to other blocks. Wind accelerates around corners, so where possible, balconies should be located away from corners to avoid these effects. Figure three provides a simple diagram, but a very useful one, to also explain the funneling effect created by buildings in close proximity to one another. But detrimental effects can only really be quantified using computational dynamic modelling or using models in a wind tunnel. Mitigation measures can include raising the height of the exposed perimeter guarding to 1.5 metres and making it imperforate, raising the side guarding to 1.8 metres. Figure 5 explains that the worst net effects of wind will be felt at the upper levels and outer corners on rectangular blocks. This diagram references the Australia and New Zealand wind loading handbook as the best relevant guide at this time. Buildings over 50 metres tall, of non-rectangular layouts or in close proximity to other tall buildings should have tests done in wind tunnels using detailed models. Inclusive design. Chapter nine states that balconies should have equal utility and enjoyment for all users. A balcony should have at least one door that permits ease of use for people with or without mobility impairments. The threshold should be level from the internal to external surfaces. Weather bars and any other similar features should be minimal and limited to no more than a 15 mm upstand. Balcony dimensions and design need to be considered, including having a 300 mm nib on the pool side of a door and wherever there is public or employee access to a balcony, then there should be a 1500 mm turning circle. If there is drainage through the pedestrian surface, it should prevent entrapment of wheelchair tyres or walking sticks. Safety. This can be broken down into four categories. Loading of the structure, loading of the envelope or guarding, prevention of falls, prevention of slips. The first of these two criteria should be dealt with by a competent structural engineer. But let's have a look at prevention of falls. Guarding is required to prevent people or objects from falling from the balcony. People should not be able to climb over it or from one balcony onto another. This is generally achieved if the guarding is at least 1100 millimetres high. But don't forget what was discussed previously regarding wind effect which may necessitate higher guarding. Steps, shelves, parapets or plinths below guarding may act as a toehold if they are greater than 25 millimetres deep. If features such as this cannot be designed out, 
there should be a risk assessment carried out, including whether to increase the guarding height to 1100 millimeters above the height of the toehold feature. Figure six provides some useful minimal dimension guides for dealing with such features. To prevent slipping, the pedestrian surface should comply with BS7976 and its pendulum test. Timber or composite surfaces should incorporate small grooves to aid slip resistance. Metal surfaces should have micro ribs. Concrete and natural stone may have inherently better slip resistance, although this should be assessed in individual cases. Also, bear in mind that the balcony should be designed to keep people below safe too. So, avoid level surfaces to handrails, where, for instance, drinks could be rested. Where there is a top rail, slant it inwards. Below that, the edges of the balcony floor should prevent objects rolling off the balcony's pedestrian surface. Performance in fire. This is a topic that has been in the news in recent years, following fires that developed on apartment balconies and then spread up the outside of the building. So, consider the materials, details and arrangement of balconies on the outside face of a building. Balcony materials should not allow fire spread across the external envelope, not spread fire downwards through molten droplets or debris, minimise risk of becoming detached, which could injure the public or firefighters, minimise the risk of affecting stability of the building if deformed in the event of fire. Balconies on floors over 11 metres and any building with stacked balconies, irrespective of height, should be constructed of non-combustible materials. Seals, gaskets, membranes and possibly laminated glass could be exempt, subject to a risk assessment. This is a little different to the advice note from the MHCLG of the 25th of June 2019 which states that balconies over 18 metres, rather than 11, should be non-combustible, and that balconies below this level should be designed to meet requirement B41 of the building regulations, i.e. they should not assist spread of fire over the walls. It was difficult to know what this precisely meant with any great clarity, so I believe that this British standard offers a clearer possible interpretation. Drainage of balconies. Proper drainage is essential to make it safe for people on the balcony, to prevent water ingress into the building, to prevent unsightly staining of the building, and so as not to be a nuisance to people below. Figure eight provides some generic options with four of the five examples showing a porous pedestrian surface. Perforated surfaces like these should not allow drainage directly onto the balconies or public spaces below and should have a collection surface below the pedestrian one. Where the balcony meets a wall, there should be an upstand and a cavity tray. There is also the option of relying solely on edge drainage for small balconies, but the document doesn't define how big a small balcony is. There is also guidance on rainwater catchment areas, including the difference between solid and non-solid guarding at the balcony edge. Detailed drainage options are given in diagrams 8, 9 and 10. Next, let's look at acoustic design. The acoustic effects of a balcony on buildings located in exceptionally noisy areas should also be considered. Table 1 offers some common layouts and the potential consequences of those regarding acoustic reflections. This is obviously a very specialist area of design that should be done by an acoustic engineer or designer. But figures 15 and 16 show some potential likely options for either absorption or diffusion of harmful noise levels to both horizontal and vertical surfaces within typical balcony areas. The acoustic design of balconies and how they affect the indoor occupants is very much outside the scope of current building regulation requirements but this new British standard does provide an interesting insight into good practice. Finally, if you've made it this far, service life. Chapter eight states that any balcony and its components should have a service life that matches that of the primary structure of the building. 
This excludes pedestrian surfaces and balustrade infill, but these should have a service life of at least 30 years. This British standard provides valuable information on commonly overlooked areas of design and I hope you found this video helpful. For more information or any questions, please call us on the number below. Thanks for watching.